This video brings you a collection of TV Democrats completely losing it over Donald Trump's big win in the 2024 presidential election. Get ready for wild reactions, over-the-top comments, and yes, even a few tears. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the madness. You won't believe some of the things they're saying. How would you explain that to a 14-year-old today? Hmm. How would you explain this election? I'll try not to, to think about my, my boys, because... <clears throat> yes. Um, but I think you would say that, um, you know, in, it, amazing things have been done through the American political system. People have been given freedoms that they were denied um, and glorious opportunities in this country that you can't get anywhere else. And then awful things have happened in the American system. And, um, and you have to fight to make sure uh, that, that you're doing the good part and not the bad part. And they can get on basically one of two buses that are going to take them to a destination they think is meaningful. And on you get on the bus, and there are a whole bunch of the people on the bus who just want to be seen and have opportunity in American life. And then there are other people on the bus engaged in the same journey who are there absolutely just for themselves, to get power, to give themselves uh, just more riches and more control over things. Uh, but in the end, you know, if they didn't make their numbers and essentially exceed the numbers that Joe Biden had in the suburbs, and I think we have to be blunt about why. Um, black voters came through for Kamala Harris. White women voters did not. Hmm. Um, that is what it appears happened in that state, um, is that if you can't flip enough white women, and we've talked about this on this set m numerous times, but it's a state where women lost their reproductive rights, where there was a very heavy push to get women to focus on not putting in place, uh, you know, re-electing, putting back into the White House the person who was responsible for taking those rights away and restoring them. Um, but that message obviously was not enough to get enough white women to vote um, for Vice President Harris, a fellow woman. This will be the second opportunity that white women in this country have to change the way that they interact. I mean I'm surprised at the result, but I'm not surprised. As a woman of color, I was so hopeful that a mixed race woman married to a Jewish guy could be elected president of this country. Uh -huh. And um, I think that it had nothing to do with policy. I think this was a referendum of um, cultural resentment in this country. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Now, let's jump back into these wild meltdown moments. We have now let misinformation become the accepted information. It has washed over us. Elon Musk, he buys Twitter, and then he uses it almost exclusively to be a propaganda machine, and we've accepted it. We've accepted a narrative that despite an actually great economic recovery, the vibes don't feel good. So we want to reject it and get something else. And the person we are now betting on to change all of it is Donald Trump, a man who did two almost impossible things. He won the American presidency twice and he drove a casino into the ground. What will the future hold? Now that America has just decided that we're going to F around and find out. Check out MSNBC's response to Donald Trump's 2024 presidential victory. A lot of folks are wondering, why would Latinos vote for Donald Trump if that means he might deport Abuela? Uh, he might deport members of their household. As you know, lots of Latino families in this country are of mixed status. And, you know, a lot of folks are asking on the Democratic side, why would they do this to themselves? Do you want to see mass deportations? So the first thing that we need to do is close the border. Uh, more than 10 million people illegally entered the country. They have to be deportations. So there, there is no other way around. They have to be deportation. They have to be no deportation uh, we camps. We have to respect the laws. No, do you no, want no, to I'm see, not saying uh, deportation camps. Do you want to see people I'm in camps rounded camps. up and put no, in no. camps? No, no, no. Isn't that what no, you voted for? Isn't that what you voted for? They are in camps now. More than 300,000 children are missing. So they're in camps now. Uh, Lulu, uh, I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that I think we need to talk about is whether or not, you know, folks just had the, the wool pulled over their eyes. And, and maybe they were voting on economic issues, but at the end of the day, maybe voting against. Watch former United States Senator Claire McCaskill break down in tears after hearing the news. Tell me what you're thinking. Well, I'm so proud. Uh, I'm so proud of her. Um, I don't think people realize how hard it is to get to where she was. 
for her to be selected as vice president after what I think she would tell you was a very disappointing presidential race where I think she kind of lost her footing and was listening too much to consultants, frankly, and wasn't, it didn't really exude who she was. And then to be vice president and to step into the most difficult situ situation in the world where she had to be completely loyal to Joe Biden and respectful of the fact that he had chosen her, but yet maneuver in a situation, I mean, such political skill, it is just inspiring. People who don't understand what she had to do to get to this moment. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just very... Jimmy was left completely speechless after hearing the news. You've got to see this reaction. Not great. Let's be honest. It was a terrible night last night. It was a terrible night for women, for children, for the hundreds of thousands of, of hardworking immigrants who make this country go. Um, <laughs> for health care, for our climate, for science, for journalism, for justice, for free speech. It was a terrible night for poor people for the middle class, for seniors who rely on Social Security, for our allies in Ukraine, for NATO, for the truth, and democracy, and decency. And it was a terrible night for everyone who voted against him. And guess what? It was a bad night for everyone who voted for him, too. You just don't realize it. MSNBC is back at it again, claiming everything is rooted in racism. Let's dive into what they had to say this time cannot ignore there is still a lot of racism and gender bias in this country. And I think for us to ignore that and not try to bring that uh, front and center so we can heal that would mean that we would end up in the same place. Kamala Harris is a woman of color in an interracial marriage and running as a woman to be the head of state. That is something a lot of Americans are not ready to deal with. Going back to 2016, sexism, I'm going to say also racism and, and bias it had to have played a role. Now, let me state the obvious. One person is a woman, <laughs> and this now makes Trump two for two in beating out a woman um, to be our, become our president. Let me just ask, ask this simply. It could be tough to answer. Is this country not ready for a woman to become president? If it Let's check out Morning Joe's meltdown. For white man from from Arkansas or from you know Florida, uh, and she ran a good uh, middle of the road campaign talking about reaching out. Do you think she would be losing by that much? I, I if think she if she could like chew tobacco and carry a shotgun and talk about football and uh, and and be a guy's guy. I mean, you tell me. The sexism and racism that clearly a lot of people in this country are willing. To tolerate. Let's take another listen to what MSNBC had to say. Got to be honest, among Hispanic men and black men, there's a lot of misogyny. And I think that we've got to deal with the reality that he appealed to this whole false macho thing that some black men and some macho, uh, um, uh, Latino men uh, went for. Honest about this. OK, let's be absolutely blunt about it. Uh, there were appeals to racism in this campaign, and there is racial bias in this country, and there is sexism in this country. And anybody who thinks that that did not in any way impact on the outcome of this race is wrong. I'm not saying that was the main reason that Kamala Harris lost and Donald Trump won it. Now for the highlight of the show, let's dive into The View and see their meltdown over the election results. You don't want to miss Sonny Hostin and Whoopi Goldberg's reactions. Let's check it out. My takeaway is that the system works. We live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. People spoke. This is what people wanted. I vehemently disagree with the decision mm -hmm. that Americans made. But I feel very, very hopeful that we have a democratic system in this country. We should value it. We should love it. We should protest if we... If the situation arises that we need to protest, which I'm sure it will. I'm profoundly <coughs> disturbed. Um, I think if you look at the New York Times this morning, uh, the headline was America makes a, a perilous choice. I think that in 2016, we didn't know what we would get from um, a Trump administration, but we know now. And um, we know now that he will have almost unfettered power. And so I worry 
Not about myself, actually. I don't worry about my station in life. I worry about the working class. I worry about my mother, a retired teacher. I worry about our elderly and their Social Security and their Medicare. Children. I worry about my children's future, especially my daughter, who now has less rights than I have. You feel what you feel. Everyone has different emotions. Some people got what they wanted. A lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. And you feel anything that comes up, and then you turn around and you say, let's look at the tapes. Let's see what we did. Let's see how we continue to fight for the people that we care about. And you take one step in front of the other. And so here we are today, and I still feel that optimistic because I feel arm in arm with so many people who agree with me. And I'm not going to stop marching. Tens of millions of Americans, our friends, our neighbors, our family members, voted for Donald Trump. We disagree with him. I know we all do at this table, but they are good, decent people who are patriots and love this country. They say, oh, she should have done this. She should have done this. She said... She did what she did. She was everywhere. She talked to everybody. And people didn't come out. I don't know why. And it doesn't even matter. He's now the president. I'm still not going to say his name. What a wild ride it's been. From MSNBC's over-the-top reactions to Morning Joe's barely contained frustration, and of course, the unforgettable meltdown on The View with Sonny Hostin and Whoopi Goldberg, it's clear that Trump's 2024 victory has sent shockwaves through the media. These moments highlight just how deeply divided some corners of the media remain, but they also make one thing obvious. This election has everyone talking. If you've enjoyed watching these reactions as much as I have, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.